A symphony in yellow, red and blue as Kandinsky's canvas goes online. Artwork on demand at home and high-end gastronomy hits the road. That's all coming up in today's show. First, it's been 12 years since Vasily Kandinsky's paintings were centre stage at the Centre Pompidou when the museum held an important retrospective of the artist's body of work. The galleries there remain closed due to COVID-19, but his vibrant, abstract canvases are just a click away since they've created an online exhibition space. Thomas Waterhouse takes a closer look at one of the Russian artist's iconic pieces. Yellow, red and blue. Just three colours were used by the Russian artist Vasily Kandinsky to create this vibrant work in 1925, aptly titled Yellow, Red, Blue. But just what does the piece signify? The painting was in fact the result of 20 years of research about the relationship between colour and feelings. On the left, this sunny and light yellow area represents warmth. On the right, we find colder and more sombre colours, and many see a passage between day and night in this painting with a glowing red twilight in the centre. Kandinsky also used this spectrum of colours to illustrate his artistic career. In 1925, he was part of the influential Bauhaus school, a movement characterised by a pared-down style and straight lines. The school then moved and Kandinsky left his friends behind. On his painting, we see him move from the rigid lines and angles of the Bauhaus to a freer, more personal style as he rediscovered his love of curves. But Kandinsky lets us use our own feelings to interpret his work in the same way that we can appreciate a melody. Music was a really important reference for Kandinsky. He used musical terms to name some of his paintings. He called some of them improvisations and others compositions, names that come from the world of music. Kandinsky used to dream up various sounds as he wielded his brushes. The Pompidou Centre and Google Arts have now tried to imagine the sounds that accompany yellow, red, blue. It's a rare and sensory experience to look and listen as Kandinsky himself once did. Well, if looking at art in the virtual space leaves you cold, there is another option. You can have it delivered directly to your door. A new scheme here in France is encouraging artists, galleries and museums to lend pieces to people to hang in their homes temporarily. And it's free of charge. All you need is a little spare space on the wall. Take a look. Lionel Sabaté is a renowned artist. Today he's come to deliver one of his paintings to a Parisian. Hello. Come on in. Thank you very much. Oh great, it's beautiful. Do you like it? I love it. This bird was created using iron oxide and zinc. It will now hang in this sitting room for two months. I mix them on the paper to give the shape of the bird. Then I use a third solution which oxidizes the two previous layers. At the moment, it's really frustrating to not be able to go to galleries or to have any contact with art in general. I didn't think twice about doing this. I simply fell in love with his bird. A few weeks ago, a new scheme called Art at Home was launched on social media. It allows artists to loan and display their work, free of charge, in people's homes. To date, over a hundred different pieces have been handed out across France. I think this is where these works really fulfil their role, because they're at the heart of different exchanges and meeting points. And that is what is really the essence of what we're doing. Once the two-month loan period is up, the painting can either be purchased or handed back to the creator. It's a clever way for artists to maintain a relationship with the public, while the doors of galleries and museums remain firmly shut. Restaurants here in France are also closed due to the nationwide lockdown, but that doesn't mean you have to miss out on a high-end culinary experience. Some Michelin-starred chefs have started hitting the streets with a food truck, bringing a takeaway twist to the dishes they're more used to serving. Jenny Shin has more. On the outside, it's a food truck like any other, but hidden inside is a three Michelin starred chef. With restaurants closed since lockdown, Alexandre Matsia opened this venue instead, where he offers his take on street foods five days a week. 
L'idée, c'est simplement d'avoir quelque chose de croustillant, mais de garder aussi le jus de la saucisse. Ce qui est important, c'est garder le jus de la saucisse. Voilà. Et là, vous avez quelque chose d'élégant, vous voyez. The set menus go for between 22 and 36 euros. Wow. And attract more than 100 customers each day. The dishes are prepared just a few meters away in this kitchen. Thanks to the truck, the chef has been able to welcome back its 17 employees. And the craftsmanship held to a high standard as ever. The business also means the chef is able to maintain his relationship with suppliers, like this fish wholesaler. Tous les restaurants où je travaille vers les goudes, là où on a notre bateau, c'est fermé, les gens ils sont tire la langue de cher, ça, ça, fait, ça fait de la peine de passer devant un restaurant avec ce produit et de savoir ne pas pouvoir leur vendre. Chef Mathia is not the only one with the idea of putting his Michelin restaurant on wheels. In Brittany, Chef Christophe Le Fure started his food truck during the first lockdown. He has left his restaurant altogether to settle instead in this commercial area of town, cooking to his heart's content dishes he had never attempted before. On a voulu euh, adapter le croque-monsieur avec euh, la, la Saint-Jacques, la coquille Saint-Jacques de la baie de Saint-Brieuc. On ne peut pas se permettre, nous, là où je suis, euh, de vendre des plats à 40 euros. Ce n'est pas possible. Donc même si j'ai une image de, 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 de chef étoilé, euh, l'idée, c'était aussi euh, la possibilité à une autre clientèle de venir voir ce qu'on sait faire aussi. The two chefs are convinced that even after their starred restaurants reopen their doors, the trucks will continue to roll. And like chefs, at the beginning of the pandemic, those in the performing arts saw their work dry up overnight. And with cultural venues across most of Europe still closed, many in the business are struggling to make ends meet. One example is opera singer Sébastien Soule, who's found himself making food deliveries on his bike. Selena Sykes and France 2 tell his story. Un impossible rêve. Just over a year ago, the pandemic turned Sébastien Soules's world upside down. It's a wave that takes you under. You're not in control of what's going on. You wait, you don't know, you're floating along. The internationally renowned opera singer has carried out more than 2,500 performances across the world over 21 years. But he saw his work dry up overnight. <laughs> Due to the international nature of his job, Sébastien is not eligible for unemployment benefits in France, where he was forced to return at the beginning of the pandemic. I went to the job centre. I wanted to give singing lessons and there was nothing. As I love riding my bike, I thought maybe this will work. So I signed up to delivery platforms. It's the 50-year-old's other passion in life which is now helping him make ends meet. Former tenor cycles up to 30 hours a week making deliveries. It's gotten me out of a hole financially, but I didn't think it would go on this long. Thanks to other forms of financial aid and his deliveries, Sébastien makes around 1,200 euros a month. He's now trying to find other ways to earn some money and start singing again. One day I just said, you're stupid. It's not food you should deliver, it's music. I told myself I'd go sing spontaneously. If concert halls are closed, it's up to me to go to the audience. Sébastien is giving his first concert in over a year at this nursing home after taking a PCR test. <laughs> Performing alongside two friends for 45 minutes for 90 euros, much to the delight of its residents, all bound together by the same passion. I love music. That's what we're here for. For now, Sébastien is still delivering on his bike, but has not given up on his dream of returning to the stage. Finally, he's the latest musician to get a piece of the digital art action. Mick Jagger is set to sell a surprise track as a non-fungible token, or NFT. The song's called Easy Sleazy, and it's a collaboration with Foo Fighters frontman Dave Grohl. Proceeds from the sale are to be donated to US and UK initiatives to support music venues that have been hit by the pandemic. We'll leave you with a clip. Do remember to check out our website or our social media feeds. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this.